Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at creating this cool edge of the world bent ocean photo manipulation effect and it goes a little something like this. Yeah. So if you like that, we're going to learn how to create that in Photoshop today. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson. If you enjoy this tutorial, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you tick on the notification bell because subscribing eh, doesn't do anything these days. I don't know. Let's jump into Photoshop and check this thing out. All right, let's get right to it here. This is just a little pre-run version of what we're going to create today. I do have linked down below the brush that I use to create the little water splashes around the ship, uh, as well as all the stock photos that I'm using. Now, they're all from Adobe Stock, so they are all paid stock photos. Uh, if you hunt around, you can probably find free stock photos as well, uh, but I haven't gone and looked for the free stock photos, uh, to be completely honest. And also, there's a brush pack that we use to create a little bit of this watery edge. Uh, that is a free brush pack. I have that linked as well, so you'll be able to check out everything. Now, because they are Adobe stock photos, I can get to them right here in my libraries panel, and I'm going to begin by opening up the ocean stock photo. Now, this technique works with literally any photo of the ocean. I wanted a, a version of the ocean that was particularly rough, a choppy sea, if you will, that tends to work really well for this effect. And the first thing I'll do is tap the little lock icon and hit Command or Control J to duplicate my layers. And I'm going to name the bottom layer vertical and the top layer here horizontal. If I can remember how to spell horizontal, sometimes your brain freezes up for a second. And then I'm going to grab the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to begin up here in the corner. I want to to be just inside of the corner. So I'm going to try to get the poly lasso tool to come through like right there. So, and I'm going to hold down shift. That's going to give me this perfect 45 degree angle. And I'm going to create this slice just like this and then close off my selection. So I got this nice triangular selection. You really want it to be as close to the corner as you can get it. It just makes things easier. So I'm going to grab my regular rectangular marquee tool and now you can just use your arrow keys and just nudge that selection. And there we go. We're burying it right into the corner just like that. Now, all I need to do with this horizontal layer selected is add a filled layer mask by holding down alter option and clicking on the new layer mask icon. Doesn't look like anything's changed because kind of nothing has. Let's select the vertical layer now and we need to make this vertical so let's go edit free transform and let's come up here to the angle and set it to a 90 degree angle it's going to rotate it up like this we can even drag it over and start to line it up um, I think to make things interesting let's right click and choose to flip it vertical uh, just to I don't know it'll just kind of swap the lighting around a little bit the main thing I'm going to be concerned with here and you can use control plus to zoom in I just want to make sure this corner is lined up as closely as possible we can adjust if we want the ocean to look like it's exactly falling over but we're going to kind of take this edge from looking like it's a super sharp edge to something a little bit more organic and natural looking. So I'm just going to nudge it left and right until it looks like it lines up. If I'm not quite filled in here and you can see we got a little gap there on the edge. Don't worry about that. We'll fix all that stuff in a moment. Down here it looks like we're lined up okay. Uh, we can, you know, we can, we, I don't know, we can play with this as much as we want. Like I said, we're going to, we're going to kind of perfect it in a little bit. So hit the check icon to commit that change. So now to get a little bit of distinction for the side wall, let's go ahead, use our rectangular marquee tool. And well, you know what, before we do that, Let's close up this little tiny bit of gap that we have around the edge of the image. Just hold down shift, select both layers, and again, we'll go edit, free transform, and we'll just zoom out a little here, and maybe we'll make the image just a little bit wider, like 100.5, something like that. That should go ahead and cover any of those discrepancies around the edges for us, and we won't have to really think about them or worry about that. All right, let's select vertical wall. We want to darken this up to really give it some distinction. We're going to do that. I'm going to collapse libraries for a second, open up my adjustments panel, and add a levels adjustment. Actually, before I add the levels adjustment, grab the rectangular marquee tool and drag a selection over the water, or, you know, kind of close to the edges of the water, right? Uh, let me uh, reselect that. You can see I'm pretty close to the edges of the water, not quite. Maybe I'll just nudge it over so it's kind of the same on both, you know, both the, the top and the side there. And then we can go select modify feather and just feather this by, yeah, maybe 15 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. And we're going to just kind of rough this in and we'll continue sort of finessing this as we move our way through the tutorial. All right, let's add a levels adjustment here. And now this is, you can see clipped to the entire water area. So if I make it darker, well, it's actually only going to make the side wall darker because it is beneath our top bit of water. So it's only going to make the side wall darker. And just to, just to keep our layer management under control, I'm going to clip it as well by holding on Command Option G. So it's just going to clip that and keep it nice and dark for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the black point up to about 100. 
I am going to set the midpoint to about 0 0.4, 0 0.35, you know, somewhere in there, something like that. And then I'm also going to flatten out the whites to really darken them up. I'm going to move that back to about eh, 135 or so. And then I'm going to boost the black straight up, maybe like plus 25, plus 30. Eh, maybe plus 25 will be more like what I want. So something like that, you can see we're just really dark, darkening up the side wall um, to the point where it looks pretty fake, but that's fine. We're gonna we sort of pull this all together here in just a moment. Let's actually add a second levels adjustment layer here because we wanna make part of this even darker. So let's go levels and I'm gonna clip this right off the bat. Command option G, that's control alt G on the PC. And we'll just duplicate up by holding down alt, hold, hold down the alter option key and just drag up that, uh, that copy of the mask to duplicate it to this level levels blend mode. And here I'm going to darken even more. So I'm going to go like plus 40, plus 45, something like that. Um, I think that's probably all I'll do for this. And I'm actually, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to just fill this mask with black. So black is our foreground color. Option delete. That's alt backspace on the PC. And I'm going to darken it by grabbing my brush tool and I'm going to right click and just choose a large, very soft edged brush. And what I'm looking to do is paint with white, just kind of here into the middle. I want to give kind of the middle of the wall a little bit of a dark dark underbelly to help start giving it some shape. All right, so something like that. And remember, we can always reduce opacity if you're looking at it and saying, this is crazy, you're messing the image up, what are you doing? I'm just gonna go in there and darken that up a little bit, something like that. And, you know, again, we'll, we'll be able to finesse this and finagle it as much as we like in just a moment. Now let's spend a little bit of time uh, sort of blending the edge of our ocean, rounding the edge of the earth, if you will. Uh, and uh, then we'll even try to round off the back corner here of this as well, just to make it look a little bit more organic. So let's begin here up on our horizontal layer. The idea is going to be, I'm going to option click the mask here for a second. The idea is going to be to extend the white mask into this black area a little bit more, uh, therefore revealing the top bit of the ocean as if or as though it's splashing out over the edge. It's going to help to give us a little bit more of a natural looking transition. So grab the brush tool and here's where you want to go to the bio of this tutorial, download that water brush and here it is, 20 water splash brushes. Just import that right into Photoshop and we can really use any of these. I'll just go with this first one here and I can see that it's number one, it's giant. So let's downsize it to about 500 to begin with. That's a little more workable and usable and then let's rotate it here. Now it may be a little bit easier to bring up your official brushes panel or your brush settings panel I should say and just set an angle like one negative 135 something like that and then we can paint notice I'm painting with my foreground color set to white I want to make sure the opacity of my brush tool and the flow are both at 100% and then just start painting some splashes that are sort of just shooting out over the edge a little bit and then just mix up the brush tip shape a little bit so grab a different uh, grab a different water splash and paint away and there we have it. I'm going to make sure I set it to 500 and again, negative 135 on the uh, angle there and just go ahead and paint, paint, paint. You could also, by the way, you could take some dispersion brushes or even some big soft edge brushes, you know, something like this. Make sure you soften it up. Maybe make it a little bit bigger and you can paint and just just round that edge off a little bit. That's totally uh, acceptable as well. That'll give you a neat little look. Just can kind of give a rounded look to the edge. In fact, maybe we should just go over the edge, round the whole thing. And then what we'll do is go over it with the splash brushes and uh, just kind of make it a little bit more interesting. By the way, just by moving in and out a little bit, you can see you kind of will give yourself these little ledges that shoot in and out. So that's kind of neat. And I'm not going to be too picky about the corner because, like I said, we're going to round that off a little bit and make it look a little bit better. And I'll just speed the video up here while I play around with splash brushes. And you can just take some time and, and work your edge, finesse it, and make it look really good. I want to add above the flat ocean. Let's darken this up a little bit as well to match before we mask in the sky. I'm going to use curves for this because I love curves. I'm going to clip this command option or control alt G and let's go ahead and just pull this down. We're going to darken this up. Don't worry about the sky getting darker. We're going to take care of that. See how this is really helping blend the top with the side while still maintaining kind of some of that, uh, some of the darker, like the, the side still is going to look darker for us than the top of the ocean here. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate this mask mask up. So hold down alter option, drag that up. And there we go. We've just darkened up the surface of the water as well. We can always go into here with a brush too, by the way, right click. Let's grab a big old soft brush here. Maybe I'll make it bigger. And let's say I want the very center of the ocean still to be pretty bright, right? So maybe I know that's probably going to be kind of the focal point and maybe the whole edge of my ocean 
uh, or my world here, I want the whole edge to still be pretty light. Uh, so something like that might work well for us. We can see there's a before, there's after. We're just helping set the scene a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do, go back to my libraries. I'm going to drag my sky into place. A lot of different ways you can go about adding a sky. I kind of like this really dramatic look. Um, I'm, I think I'm just going to use one big sky because there's almost this bluishness here that's going to sort of look kind of like it just belongs when I add it or when I mask it into place, right? It's going to kind of be up here just above what would be the horizon of our, our fake earth here. I'm going to close up the libraries panel and the adjustments panel. And I'm once more, I'm going to duplicate this mask. I'm going to drag it up. Let's just see what it looks like. We may need to adjust it. Well, first and foremost, of course, we're going to need to adjust it. We need to hit command or control I to flip it. Uh, but you can see here, the edge is not quite the way we want it to be. So let's select the mask. We'll come here first to our mask properties panel and we can try changing the feather a little bit, maybe feather it a little bit more. That's not going to work for us. Density is not going to work. So let's go select and mask here. And I'm going to come down here to shift edge and I'm just going to shift it a little bit until I see some of that glow go away. You'll see it slowly go away as you inch that upward. And I think I'm also going to bump up the contrast to make the transition a little bit sharper, something that looks a little bit more natural. Again, this is going to be totally to your personal taste. I like a little bit of feather on the edge but not too much. And I kind of like, it sort of naturally rounds the back edge for us and makes it look like this big old ledge of water sticking out into the air. I kind of like it. I'm going to hit okay. And as I look at this, I think I want to make the top of the wall a little bit lighter. So I'm going to select this levels adjustment layer, make sure I'm selecting the mask. I'm going to grab my brush tool. Here's where the opacity controls of the brush are really useful. Just hit the number five, reduce the brush opacity to 50. And let's paint with a 50% black brush. See the brush is black, really nice and soft edge. I can right click, see hardness is down at zero. And I'm just going to click once, hold down shift and click over here and just help blend that together a little more. It might be a little bit too much at 50%. Maybe what I'll do is move the brush all the way back here, hold down shift and just paint a nice edge across the top just to do, yeah, just to do a little something, something something as it as the brush travels right on across that top edge now, before we go any further, we want to begin to match the contrast and brightness of the sky to our water. The easiest way to do that is to get rid of all the color in the scene. So let's open up our adjustments panel and add a black and white adjustment layer. This is great. This is fine. Uh, and then beneath it, we're going to add, we could go with curves or levels. I'm going to go with curves because I just prefer working with curves. So I'm going to add curves. And what I'm going to do with my curves, I'm going to collapse adjustments here. I'm just going to clip it to the layer beneath. You can just use that same hotkey, command, option, G, that's control, alt, G on the PC. And let's keep an eye on this. You can see it's not contrast enough and it's not dark enough. So let's open up our levels again and maybe I'll try to make this a little bit smaller here. Uh, first and foremost, we will try to just darken this up, try to sort of match the darkest shadows of the sky to what would be the darkest shadows of our scene. Maybe not of the dark wall, but whatever the darkest shadows on the surface of the water are, we'll try to match them a little bit. I'll maybe pull down the darkness of the sky overall. And then we want to try to match the highlights in the sky to the highlights on the surface of the water. So we're going to bump the brightness up a little bit there in the sky, maybe pull back on that to increase the contrast. And it's really just a labor of love here as you, as you cycle through it. It can't be too bright. It can't be too dark. It certainly needs more contrast. All right, something like that's not bad. I need to make it a little bit darker, though. I need to bring these, these tones down a little bit. Right, move toward the middle of the image. Let's keep spiking the highlights. We want to not blow out the highlights. I'm really watching that right there. I don't want it to become, you know, solid white. That would be really bad. But we just want to really make sure we're pumping the contrast to match the scene as best we're able. All right, let me shut off black and white. And we can see there's before the curve, there's after the curve. Now, the colors are still totally whacked out, not looking good. But the contrast and the brightness of the sky is now going to match the ocean a little bit more. I can get rid of the black and white adjustment layer. Again, that's all going to be totally to taste. Some of you may love that. Some of you may hate it. But let's go ahead and add a levels adjustment here and just darken our horizon. So go ahead and add a levels adjustment. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth levels and curves because some of you may be more familiar with one or the other. So this way we can all kind of have a little bit of fun. Open up this levels here and I'm going to set my uh, middle point here to like mm, 0 0.4, something like that. And I'll boost the blacks here to make pl maybe like plus 15. And then I'm going to reduce the whites down to about 200. So reduce that white point just like that. You can see really radically dark the entire scene. Don't worry. Select our layer mask here and hit command or control I to fill that mask with black. It just flips the white right to black. Then grab the brush tool and a big 700 pixel brush. Uh, that may be interesting. That's probably big enough for us, actually. I am going to make sure I'm painting with white.
right? And let's just paint this across our horizon. So click and then hold down shift and click like right there and then hold down shift and click like right down there. So you can see there's before, there's after. It's still pretty noticeable. So with the mask still selected, we'll go filter, we'll go blur, Gaussian blur and blur at about 300 pixels a pretty extreme blur and hit OK. So now there's before, there's after. Just going to help sort of tie the scene together a little bit more, give the edges of our cliff a little bit more dimension as well. All right, now that we've played with the brightness, I said we'd get to the saturation or the color of the sky, really. Let's do that now. Here on the curves layer, let's add directly above that a hue saturation adjustment layer. And again, clip it, Command Option G. That's Control Alt G. And we'll double click here. And uh, really what I need to do is just get rid of some of these yellows, the warm tones in the sky. So I can use a little finger scrubby here, select that and just say, look, all those yellows just really begin to desaturate them. And you can see immediately how much of a difference just that makes in terms of helping match the scene. Uh, the, the ocean out here still looks a little bit dark, but again, we're going to be changing up the whole scene overall and darkening some things and changing some stuff. I think I kind of like that. You could go to your master and just reduce the, reduce the saturation overall or maybe increase that. Uh, probably needs to be reduced a little bit and you could even tilt the hue a little bit more in the blue direction um, I don't know I don't I don't really want to play with the hue I don't think but there's a quick before and after we're just we're pulling things into a general approximation of one another because we're going to be adding such a strong color effect everything here doesn't have to be really perfect it just has to be kind of close enough one thing I do want to do is add a curves adjustment layer uh, to the top of the ocean because I kind of want to darken some parts of it. Like up here, there's not much reflected light off the horizon. It would be dark. So I want to kind of put a dark spot in the ocean there. So I'll do that down here using a curves adjustment layer. I got my curves adjustment layer clipped to the top part of my ocean. I'm going to go and say add another curves adjustment layer. This one, I don't think I'm going to clip. I'm going to call it ocean darken or something like that. I'll double click here. I'm going to pull the white point down. You can see how that's kind of flattening, killing off some contrast in the ocean. And then I'm going to actually darken as well, something like that. Now that's obviously way too extreme. So we'll select the mask, command or control I to invert the mask. Effect has gone away. Great. Grab the brush tool. And again, we're using the brush tool at a 50% opacity that may actually be why the uh, the effect for a horizon was a little bit lower than it should have been then I'm just going to paint in some areas where I think some darkening ought to be like right there maybe maybe a little bit more darkening there we can use some darkening here and sort of the foreground of our ocean and if you if you can get this right I'm going to darken up up here as well if you can get this part right you can really begin to build out your scene uh, much more like it probably will look like it should be I'll add a little bit more darkness here to the side wall as well um, just overall darkening that up. Maybe I'll add a dark sort of line underneath the, the ledge just to further set that apart. So we're just kind of shaping things up there just like that. And I also need to add a black to transparent gradient that affects the sky down here. The sky is way too bright down here. So what we'll do is right above the sky, actually probably above the whole package of sky stuff, let's add a fresh layer. So just new layer and we'll call this darken corner or something like that. Make sure our foreground color is set to black, not this like weird dark gray blue color, solid black, grab the gradient tool and you want to find your foreground to transparent gradients. Hit OK. And then what we'll do is just drag a gradient out of this corner. And I'm going to try, try to drag it. Yeah, sort of like that. So most of the black is affecting the sky and a little bit is sort of splashing onto the side wall. And I sort of like the way it looks just left alone, but we could play with the opacity a little bit maybe. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit better. Something like that. Just a little opacity adjustment, uh, but I kind of like the way it fades everything together. And at this point, we're ready to add the boat, but I'm still distracted by this front face. I know we're going to be changing it, but I kind of want to just change the color right now. Let's do this here with this original levels adjustment layer here. So I'll double click this and I'm going to say, look, hey, greens, we just we kind of want you to, to just calm down a little bit. And also the yellows that are going to be in the highlights. See, we're, we're adding yellow there. We actually want to we want to add a little bit more blue down there. Right, not too much blue. That's going to look really bad in other ways. Just, just something to kind of just chill it out a little bit down there and make it match a little bit more. I think something like that is nice. And I'm going to go back up to my top layer and I'm going to load in my ship. Now, this ship, it is also an Adobe stock photo right there, but I've gone ahead before this tutorial started and I just masked the whole boat out just like this and I can grab it. Just there's tons of tutorials on masking. I got a bunch on my channel. We'll just grab this and we'll drag it here into our PSD. 
Then I'll come over here and I'll close my boat, uh, my boat PSD. We don't need that. And what I'm going to do here with this is number one, I need to resize it a little bit. You could convert it to a smart object, but I like my mask a little bit too much. I could move the mask, convert it to a smart object, eh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work with this a little destructively. So I'm going to go free transform and I'm going to scale it down. And really the scale is up to you. The bigger the boat looks, the smaller the edge of the world is going to look. If you make the boat really small, all of a sudden this is going to look like a huge edge of the world. Now you do want to be cognizant of like little suds in the ocean, things like that. That'll give away the fact that that, you know, the water looks a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go with the mid-sized ship, something sort of like that. And I want to change the perspective a little bit. I would prefer that the line of the, the hull here runs a little closer to the line of the edge of the earth. So let's right click and go perspective and we'll just pinch the back end of the boat and maybe we'll boost the front end of the boat and we'll right click and go scale. Hold down shift if you're using the latest version of Photoshop. So we sort of unconstrained proportions and we'll just kind of rock the boat into place a little bit like like that. One other thing I want to do is give the boat a little bit of a tilt, almost as if it's coming up over a wave here, sinking into the water a little bit. So see this little center point right here? I'm going to drag it to like the front hull of the boat there. And then I'm going to just navigate around the edges of my transform handles. I need to right click and make sure I select free transform again. And I'm looking for that little swing arrow. And I'm just going to tip the boat like this. Now it doesn't look all that great because we still need to mask the boat and make it look like it's actually sinking into the ocean. We're going to do that. Let's commit the change. And let's tweak the mask. So I'm going to zoom in here and there's a bunch here. We need to correct some of the little splashy stuff as well. The wake. Uh, I'll select the mask, grab the brush tool. And here again is where we're going to go back to our water splash brushes. Now you want to use these water splash brushes, but you want to use them kind of small. So like 250 pixels, that might even be too big. And I mainly want to paint with black because I want to introduce my ocean scene. See how that's almost making it look like there's just splash being added to the front of the ship. I also probably want to set the opacity of my brush tool back to 100%. So I can just add sort of this splashing going on around the ship, just like that. And I'm going to right click again. I'm going to choose maybe this, well, maybe not that water splash. Maybe I'll go with like this one here. Again, I'm going to make it nice and small. Let's go like 250 in the size department. And I'm going to come, oh, that's a little bit too much. Now, one thing I can do is begin going over the back edge of the boat and just making it kind of look like it's sinking into the water a little bit. See how much more realistic that looks all of a sudden? There we go. And I can also play with the wake that this boat is bringing in. So something like that. Add a little bit of splash to the front of the ship. Something like that. There we have it. Oh, that's a little too much. And you can go through and just play with this and tweak it as much or as little as you like. Maybe I'll try one more here and just see what we can get. Let's see what this looks like. That's kind of interesting. Add some splashy stuff. Just a little bit of small texture around the boat. And just like that, we really, really blend this boat into the ocean scene. Now, the color doesn't quite match. We're going to adjust brightness and color here in just a moment. One thing we'll have to do in addition to the brightness the brightness and contrast is saturation because it's going to be such a dull, muted scene. This bright orange boat, as beautiful and wonderful as it looks, uh, we're going to want to kind of tone it down a little bit for the moodiness that we're getting here. So let's first match brightness. We're going to throw our black-white adjustment layer over top of this again. And the boat just looks like it's a little bright. That's kind of it. Uh, it'd be nice if the whites of the boat were a little more dull and the hull of the boat was a little darker. So let's select the boat layer and I can actually name it boat as well. Boat. Is it a ship at this point? I don't know. It's a pretty big boat. I feel, I feel a boat to me is like a rowboat. That's like a ship. Uh, there we go. We're going to go curves and I'm going to clip the curves just to our boats. Command option G or control alt G. Let's open that up and we can tone down the whites by dragging down the white point right here. So we drag down the white point. We tone down the whites and it just looks like it matches a little better. And then let's pull in uh, some darkness into our shadows. Maybe we'll spike the shadows over a little bit. Trying to match contrast a little bit. Ooh, that might be a little too contrasty. Maybe something a little bit more like that. Maybe a little bit too uh, a little bit too dark there for a second. Let's shut off black and white and we can see there's before curves and there's after curves. So we're just kind of washing the ship into the scene a little bit more. And then to reduce saturation, we could create what's called a saturation mask and do all kinds of fancy matching up. Again, we just need to, we just need to get it close enough here. So let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to clip it to the boat, command option G as we've done a million times seemingly already. And I'm just going to reduce the overall opacity of the ship like mm, negative 45, let's say. So something like that. You can see all of a sudden now it's fitting into our scene a lot better. Negative 45 might be a little strong. Let's go negative 30. There we go. Something like that I think looks pretty nice. 
All right, one thing that uh, keeps jumping out at me is the horizon looks just a little bit too perfect. Uh, we can go around here on the sky layer, and by masking and painting with white, we can effectively change the shape of our ledge. So maybe what we can do is here on the vertical, I'm going to make sure I'm working in the mask for the sky layer right there. Grab my brush tool. I'm going to right-click. I don't want a brush like that. Um, you could go with a hard-edged brush. You could go with kind of a softer-edged brush. I've got some dispersion brushes. You can Google around, find there's tons of free dispersion style brushes all over the web and I'm going to set this to like 200 and uh, I'm going to go shape dynamics and say hey look give me some size jitter give me some angle jitter and also in brush tip shape increase the spacing kind of a bit right maybe like 25 30 percent something like that and I want to paint with uh, white because I want to use the sky to cover up the edges here so I'm just going to begin painting Oop, that is way too much let's uh, move away from the edge a little bit I just want to begin painting to introduce some texture to the edge of my little planetary experiment here just to make it look like our horizons a little bit more uh, uh, either otherworldly or just give it a little bit more texture especially here for this rock face where it can almost be uh, depicted as water it's not really a rock face it looks rock facey but it's uh it's actually just water falling down so this will help give it a little bit more of that illusion of the water maybe spraying off of it a little bit then we can loop around round off the corner there just a little bit more just to really uh, hit that edge a little and if we zoom out we can see what we've done there and then maybe what I'll do is click a single time hold down shift and click across the horizon maybe just a couple times introduce a little bit of kind of chaos and confusion up there give it a little bit of roughness um, and again this maybe is not the best brush in the world to be doing this with but I think it'll get the job done well enough sort of Something like that. And again, I could go over it, you know, for 20 minutes and, and just really work to get it perfect, which of course is what you should do if you're creating a, a beautiful piece of artwork. Uh, but I'm creating a tutorial as well. So things are a little different. So there we go. It just kind of helps. You can see it gives a little bit more of that tempestuous sea vibe right off in the horizon like that. I kind of dig it. All right, so now we're going to add some foreground texture, that being rain. I'm actually looking at this darkened front edge. I think I need to push the opacity up a little bit more. I think it needs to be a little darker. There we go, something like that. Let's go all the way up above everything. Now, this is another stock photo, this falling raindrops, just kind of on a black background. There's a lot of different ways to make rain in Photoshop, but I've realized nothing beats just using a real authentic, like, photograph texture over black. I'm going to drag this out, hold down shift. I'm going to change the way it looks a little bit. Kind of, there we go. Commit that change. Now, if I zoom in, I can see there's kind of the, these chromatic aberrations on the raindrops. I want to get rid of all them. So let's go image adjustments and just choose black and white. That's going to just get rid of all that. We can hit OK and just leave it at the default. I'm going to zoom out here. And then what I'm going to do is set this layer to the blend mode screen. So you can see it gives us this very, very strong effect. In fact, it looks very fake at this point because of how strong and prominent it is. Uh, we're not going to reduce the opacity to make this look, look weaker because that does weird things. Uh, well, I lie. We may reduce the opacity a tiny bit. But mainly, we're going to just click on the layer. And we are going to go and use the blend if sliders. So I want to begin giving getting rid of the rain that we can see. Let's try on the light parts of the image underneath. So underlying image, the white slider, hold down the alt or option key, split that slider and just pull back and just watch how the rain blends into the scene. That's kind of interesting. I'm going to try blending it in the shadows as well a little bit, just in the really, really dark areas. Something like that. That looks a bit more realistic, I believe. And I think I may tone down the opacity a little bit more just until it starts to look fake right around there, and then I'll bring it back a little bit. So like 84% is what I'm going with. A screen blend mode is looking good. I'll hit OK. So now, before our rain and after our rain. Now, that's not good enough. We need to add dimension to the rain. So I'm going to select my rain layer, hit Command or Control J to duplicate it, of course, and then go Edit, Free Transform. It's going to say, look, there's some smart filters. We're going to shut them off. That's fine. And I'm going to make sure I have my little chain link checked on here. And I'm going to set my width and height to like something crazy, like 500%. Now, this is going to make a huge file size, but I'll show you how to alleviate that in a second. Let's commit the change. It may take a minute for your computer to kind of process that. That's totally fine. But most importantly, we now have a file that's about a gigabyte because if I hit Command or Control T, 
you can see we've got this all this rain effect out here as well, which is all sort of being wasted. Let's uh, let's fix that. So here on this rain layer, go select select all, and we're going to hit Command or Control J, which is going to take what we've selected, which is everything we can see, Command or Control J, and pop it up onto a new layer. Now we can take this giant layer right here, and we can just delete it, just get rid of it altogether. Now for this. Let's call it blurred rain. It's our foreground rain. We're actually going to blur it a little bit more. Let's go filter, blur, motion blur. And what I'll do here is I'm going to rotate the angle until it looks about right. So kind of somewhere over here, negative 60-ish degrees is about right. You can see that's looking pretty good. Let's try negative 60 straight up. Mm, nope, that's not quite what I want. Maybe negative 70. Negative 70 looks pretty good. And uh, a distance of about 65. Let's push it up a little 75 maybe and hit OK. And then to really add the blur effect, we'll go filter blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll give this a nice not 300 pixel blur. Maybe let's try 35. 35 is a little strong, maybe 20. There we go, something like 20. And you can see that we now have this sort of blurred rain, which would be falling in the foreground. We can make this a little stronger if we like. We can make it a little weaker. Again, just, you just adjust with that opacity slider. It's going to help add a lot of realism to your rain. I'm going to call this a ridge rain, as in original rain. So again, there's before our rain, there's after our rain. We're really building out the storminess of our scene. Now, another thing that I think would be cool here is if we go back to the clouds layer and we apply a little bit of blur down here to just kind of make that drop away a little bit more. Here's how we're going to do it. Let's just collapse our library. Select that uh, sky layer right there. And we're going to go filter, blur gallery, and choose the field blur. And what I'm going to do with the field blur is bring my first pin all the way down here, probably down here to the corner, and say like, hey, blur this maybe 25 pixels. Give it a nice heavy blur. And that looks pretty good for the blur. The problem is it's blurred the rest of the sky. So we can fix that by adding a pin maybe right here. And we're going to set this pin to 0% blur. And we'll have to add a couple more pins just to contain the blur. Let's add another one here and set that to 0% blur or 0 pixel blur, I should say. And then another one out here sort of underneath the water, if you will, just so that blur doesn't seep all the way out to this part of the sky. We're going to set that to 0 pixels as well. Then we can go ahead and hit OK. And you can see that we have a nice amount of blur added to the sky that should be like way down there. All right, let's tone this guy up a little bit here. Like all creative things, this is totally up to your discretion. You can do as much of this as you like, do as little as you like, or do something totally different. Do what looks good to you. It's your artwork. I'm going to add a channel mixer here, and I'm going to tick on monochrome. I may try to like boost the blue channel a little bit just to add a little bit more lightness into what are already kind of the brighter areas of the image here. And then I'm going to set this to the multiply blend mode. You can see this is giving us this really heavy look. So I'm going to reduce the opacity and knock it down to like ah, 50. 60 something like that and now that I've introduced all of this darkness let's add a selective color adjustment layer and I'm going to go to the blacks and I'm going to reduce the blacks a little bit it's effectively going to give me this faded effect right I don't want to do it quite that much I want to go like ah, negative 8 9 10 max I may also get rid of a little yellow and just give a couple drips of blue into the shadowy parts of this image we can always come back and adjust this later I'm not I'm not crazy committed to anything at this point I'll try adding a color lookup table here. Let's load in, we got all these default ones here, the teal orange plus contrast. We have a low contrast image. Look at that, that adds a nice spike of contrast. May need to have a little bit of a contrast or an opacity adjustment there though, because uh, a little bit too much of that teal for my taste. There we go, something like that. So just a couple adjustment layers. There's before, there's after. You can see how it really pulls everything together. And again, at this point, you can go back and say, you know what, that hue saturation, I actually want to see more of that orange, or maybe I want to see less of the orange, right? It's all really up to you. I kind of actually like seeing a little bit more of the orange. I dig a little orange. Maybe something like that is nice. You can still go back and adjust uh, the, the the darkness of the side wall or the, the highlight or shadow around the edges of our watery earth, our watery grave looking scene where the ship is so precariously perched on the edge of the flat earth, if you believe in things like that. Uh, and uh, what, I, what I'll do here at this point is I can add one final round of like tonal adjustments. And we do that by merging all of the layers to a new layer, command shift option and the letter E that's control shift alt E for those of us on the PC. And I'm going to call this final toning. And like every time you name something final, you'll probably be back to adjust it. And because we know we'll probably be back to adjust it, let's right click on the layer and convert it to a smart object because when we go filter camera raw filter, 
we can always get back into this because we're applying this camera raw filter to a smart object. Now, first and foremost, let's zoom in on this, uh, get it to 100%, and I am going to sharpen it first. So I'm going to come up here to the Detail tab, hold down Alter Option, and let's just play with the sharpening. Let's give it a real nice, crisp, sharp look. Increase the masking a little bit just so we're getting it out of some of those shadowy areas and just concentrating it on the highlights. The radius and detail are good as uh, default. I'm going to go back to my original sort of exposure tab here. Double click the hand tool. It's going to show me the entire image. And I want to do some tonal and contrast bumps here. I want to push clarity into this image. Clarity is really going to do some nice things for us here in an image like this. It really gives us a nice spike. Uh, maybe even a little dehaze on top of that. You can still come in and boost the vibrance a little if you want. That might be nice. We can very easily swing the temperature, make it a much more blue scene or make it a much warmer scene. If, uh, if you like either one of those things, I actually kind of like a couple drips of blue and maybe a little bit of green in there as well. That gives me more of that size cyan look. Let's go like negative eight on my temperature slider. You can play with the highlights and the whites. Maybe I'll reduce the whites, uh, but boost the overall highlights just to help control them a little bit. You can change the exposure if you like. That's cool. We have an entire tone curve here that could be played with. We're not going to touch it. We're going to come over to effects, however. I'm going to double click my magnifying glass here to zoom into 100%. And I want to add some grain. Most retouchers add a level of finishing grain just to help blend all the colors and tones together a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a bit of grain kind of until it becomes noticeable. Let's boost the size a little. And see, now it's really super noticeable. So let's pull back on that. Let's pull back on the size a little. Adjust the amount. Just keep playing with it until until you see something that you like. I think something like that is nice. And uh, one final thing, in uh, calibration, we can play with the color of the shadows. And you, well, like look look at this over here. And this is why we want to look at the whole image when we add grain, because uh, that's way too much grain over there. So let's go, let's uh, reduce the size a little bit. Uh, maybe we need to actually increase the size a little bit, but we need to definitely reduce the amount. There we go. Something like that is much healthier looking. Uh, that's nice. So just be cognizant of all that stuff. And I'll come over here to calibration and here we could add more purple or more green to our shadows. Uh, with this particular image, I'm not sure what I like. I think I like a little bit of a purple pumped into there. That's not bad. And I will hit OK. And you can see here before the final toning, after the final toning, it just really adds a nice level of like it just adds a nice spike to it. I don't know what else to say. Uh, this is really it. This is how I go about creating this bent earth ship composite effect right here in Photoshop. All right, there you have it. That is, I don't know, what else can I say? That's how you create that effect and everything that goes along with it. Now, if you did create this effect, I would, mm, I would love to see it. Upload it to your Instagram, tag me in the Instagram photo by pressing and tagging in your photo like that, not just in the caption because that stuff goes away like in my notifications. Whereas if you tag me in the actual image, I can come and check it out whenever and I would love to show you a little bit of love, give you a like, drop a comment. I try to comment on pretty much everything. Um, so yeah, if you create this and you, you like what you got, I would love Absolutely love to see what you created uh, for checking out the, the different transform options, all the different color blending options and masking and adjustment layers and the little rain texture we applied to this and everything else that we covered in this Photoshop tutorial. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.